Um, hi again. Um, now that we know um, that we've downloaded uh, Home OS, uh, run it, and it runs fine. Um, and so we're going to talk about how to write code uh, against the Home OS SDK. In general, there are three extensibility points for this SDK. Um, the first is scouts. Uh, so scouts are um, things that discover devices on the network. And during the installation process of a device, the scouts are the one that do the discovery. And based on that discovery, they are responsible for identifying what driver to start. So drivers are entities uh, that communicate with devices uh, when Home OS is running. And, and they expose the functionality of uh, the uh, devices in some easy to consume ways. And that functionality is consumed by applications. Um, and and they also and applications also surface that functionality uh, to the users uh, through the UI. Um, so now we're going to walk through each of these and how to each of these extensibility points and how to actually develop new instances of them. Uh, in code.sln, you will find essentially um, like a dummy scout, a dummy driver, and a dummy app. And that's what we'll focus on because these are somewhat simpler. We've developed them for instruction purposes than some other drivers. But you also see that there's a webcam scout, there's a webcam driver, and a camera viewer app. So this scout driver and app is what uh, uh, got essentially used in what uh, what when we show the getting uh, started uh, video. Uh, okay, so let's see what a scout is. Um, so let's start with a dummy scout. Um, a scout is essentially a thing that implements an iScout interface. And if we look at this interface, it basically has three functions, dispose, which is called once the scout needs to end, um, an init call, and a get devices call. So this get devices call is what uh, gets called once the platform is asking the scout, hey, what devices do you see on the network? So if you look at the dummy scout, um, so there's the init function, which is look will look pretty similar uh, for most things. And uh, so when you're developing your scout, you can just, for most part, cut and paste it. And the interesting part is get devices. So in get devices, uh, dummy scout is very simple. What it's doing is it's basically instantiating like a new device, and it always kind of returns that. The important thing in here is to actually identify in the in the device definition here, it identifies the driver that can use this device. By the way, there's no device actually backing the dummy device, so we're kind of making up uh, a device. But in reality, there will be a device. So actually, as an example, let me quickly show you uh, the webcam scout. So webcam scout, once the get devices function is called, is actually using some high-level APIs to list all the webcams attached to uh, the computer uh, where, where Homeless is running. And it basically then um, walks that list and packages them up and returns here. And there are other examples that are bundled um, on CodePlex for uh, scouts, uh, like for um, like network cameras and so forth. And so you can see like more design patterns for these things. But the core thing is to implement get devices. So going back to a dummy scout, what you see here is that every time this is called, um, uh, this is very simple. The key parts here is that you assign essentially names that are relevant to the device here. And the driver gets specified here. So homeos.hub.drivers.dummy is what should be called once the dummy thing, uh, once the dummy um, scout is running. And this thing is essentially uh, parameters um, that the driver will be passed uh, once it's started. So in, in the case of dummy, the parameter is just device.unique name, and the unique name was uh, is dummy device as configured here, and then return this list. So that's basically mostly what um, is needed. Uh, the other thing we do uh, that most of our uh, UI gets exposed, as I mentioned, through HTML and JavaScript. So uh, basically, uh, what gets happened is like we start this scout service, uh, which gets called if we go here. Um, so that's the dummy scout service, and it implements a function called get instructions. And this function can be uh, is uh, implemented. This service class, uh, you can, for most part, uh, copy and paste it. And this would be when special UI is um, coded in there. So, so in, in, the, in the index.html for, um, for the dummy, it's basically empty. But what's required here um, 
it's um, we'll, we'll provide some additional documentation for fancier index.html's but for this one it's basically just pointing us back to a page this should be the final page in there but uh, the option here this index.html it actually gets called um, it gets loaded when um, when the device discovered by the scout is being installed and in this case we are essentially just redirecting here uh, to this particular URL as you see window.location.href because there's no scout or device specific configuration required uh, for the dummy device. Um, in case I managed to confuse you all at this point, uh, it'll be good to see actually what index.html for uh, the network camera as an example or one of the gadgeteer uh, scout uh, looks like. Um, but going back to basics, uh, what we need is basically, like I said, a get device uh, functionality here. So that's essentially the scout. So let's uh, look at um, let's look at the driver. So a dummy driver is here. Um, so as you may have read in the documentation, that um, the drivers and applications they are both uh, modules in HomeOS, um, what we call like a module, and they extend the module base uh, class. And drivers and applications they talk uh, using these things that we call ports. What a driver does, it um, it exports the ports uh, to the core platform and applications um, query what ports exist and uh, and use the ones they like. Uh, so let's focus on the dummy driver here. So uh, the start function is called once the driver is started. Uh, the arguments are are passed to the driver in module info dot arg. So it's basically getting the the first argument here uh, arg0 so remember what the scout was doing is passing the device's unique name and then what it's doing is it's basically uh, instantiating a port class this is a standard pattern um, that we can use for all, all drivers and then it's um, it's declaring a list of roles that are backed um, by this port so a role essentially is uh, describes a functionality so if we quickly go to role dummy um, and the role dot, so it has essentially, so this is, um, uh, this is the metadata file because what we have is references to binaries and not source. So let me actually go to role.cs, which is under common. So there are a bunch of roles already defined, um, but let's go to role dummy. Um, uh, a role dummy is basically the role name is dummy and it has two operations echo and echo subscription so these are the names and then these are standard ways to define what the parameters and the return values of each operation uh, would be so using a similar pattern you can define uh, your own roles all right so getting back to driver dummy um, here's the binding that's going on and then you register um, you, so supports uh, roles have been bound to the port and more than one role can be bound to a port. So a particular port could have like multiple types of functionality. And then we register the port with the platform. And in that in this case, what the driver is doing is starting a worker thread to do something. So the, the expectation from the start function call is that it will finish. And then we start like an image server, uh, which gets used during uh, driver installation to uh, serve, let's say some icons for the drivers and so and so forth. Um, the other thing is stop. This is called when the driver uh, platform wants to unload uh, the uh, driver. So in this work function, um, all essentially um, this particular driver is doing, since there's no device backing it, it's uh, sending essentially a notify operation. Uh, it's sending a notification um, once notify is called. So all the applications that have subscribed to dummy port are sent a notification with uh, this particular return value here. So it's basically, as you can see, it sits around a loop and sends a notification. It doesn't do anything fancy. Of course, if you write real drivers, they'll have different kinds of functionality. And again, on CodePlex and in the zip file, there are uh, plenty of examples for how to write drivers. Um, on invoke is the function that gets called uh, when an application calls um, any operation on the port. So in this case, um, basically it's checking whether it's echo. When the echo operation comes in, uh, it does a return. It just, um, so the expectation is that the parameter uh, would be of the arguments that come in, which came in here, 
um, is an integer. So it just basically does multiply 0 minus 1 and kind of returns it. Uh, port registered and port deregistered are uh, callbacks that the platform makes into applications and drivers to declare uh, when new ports enter the system or when ports exit the system. Now, since this is a driver, it is actually not interested in any other ports. So that's basically a very simple driver. Uh, to recap, what is doing to what the driver does is declare the ports um, and the roles backing it, export it to the platform and common work and and figure out what roles to export and and so forth in there okay uh, so let's now focus on the dummy app um, the dummy app is in apps let me compress it so you can see where I'm going um, so dummy app is under apps dummy dummy dot CS um, so again just like uh, the dummy driver the dummy app also uh, does uh, module based but the one thing I forgot to mention is that um, both drivers and applications they are system dot add-ins so whenever you start a new thing you basically this is the name uh, that you should define here uh, so in this case it's homo is dot hubs dot apps dot dummy so okay so let's focus on what uh, this app is doing okay so let's um, look at the structure of the apps um, so just like drivers, the start function is called. Uh, what it's doing is it's starting a dummy service. Um, this service is um, essentially what hosts uh, the UI. Um, as I mentioned multiple times, the UI is HTML JavaScript. So we need, we start like what this service host, which is exposes a RESTful interface and of which backing it by um, IDEMI contract, which um, I'll show you in a bit. It's actually, well, let's just show you now. Uh, it exposes two function get received messages and get received messages and these functions are implemented by this particular service which actually goes into the real object uh, which is here dummy and displays this so once the code is in front of you it's going to be uh, a lot more simple okay going back to the app so it starts the service for the UI uh, it starts uh, it starts another service and this service is the one that's actually um, serves the app itself in terms of like the index.html uh, and JavaScript content in here and in dummy there's an index.html and there's a class file CSS here in there okay now to the main more interesting parts um, it keeps this dummy app it keeps a list of all the dummy ports that it has accessible so once it starts off what it does is basically uh, ask the platform uh, what are all the ports that have been registered by the various drivers and for all the ports that have been registered um, it calls this process call which I'll go to now and then it starts a thing where it keeps an empty list of messages and over here you also see like it's opening up a data stream to log stuff and we'll do a separate video for how to actually do use the data store uh, APIs uh, then it's core work it starts in a thread and I'll show you in a bit what it does. Um, and that's basically the start call uh, in there. Uh, stop, uh, similar to the driver, uh, just do your cleanup. It will be called once the platform is exiting or it wants to stop this module. Uh, this dummy app is really very simple. What it does, it sits in a loop and it sends like an echo request to all the dummy ports that are accessible. Uh, so it sits in a loop, um, every 10 seconds, um, it sends an echo request. Uh, which it get then I'll show in a bit what send echo request done. This is the write to stream. Um, this is uh, essentially um, uh, to write data to the data store. Uh, send echo request is uh, collecting essentially uh, the list of um, uh, the list of arguments here, but it's basically doing an invoke on the port it was ca called with and it's supplying the parameter in this case the dummy role had parameter for echo has one type of integer so in this this is the integer and then it does uh, the return values get written here and then it's checking whether it was not an error uh, if it's error it kind of logs this error and if it is um, sorry if it is not an error it gets what the return value was prints it to the log and if it was an error, uh, error it prints that it was an error so that's basically it's doing um, so on notification this is a function that's called uh, by the platform once subscription operations 
uh, once there's a notification sent by the drivers so so that's that's the subscription and it also gets called with role name operation name and in this case remember that the dummy driver was sitting around and sending notifications every so often and it basically parsing uh, what came out um, basically from the notifications and printing it on the log here uh, so process all ports, it's basically calling port registered. Uh, port registered is the callback that the platform calls. So in here, what this application is doing is sitting here in a loop. And it's basically saying whether this port that was registered, is it, um, is it a dummy? Uh, is it the one that has a dummy role or not? Because this application is only interested in dummy roles. And then it calls get capability. Um, the get capability returns from the platform essentially the permission to talk to the port. And if it's null, that means the permission is not there. If it's non-null, you get a valid uh, capability. And if it does that, it remembers that port, uh, logs it, um, and then it subscribes it uh, in here. So this is where the subscription has gone in and it subscribes here. Port re deregistered is called when ports disappear uh, from the platform. So it basically says if the port that disappeared, if I was using it in accessible dummy ports, it uh, removes it. And get reserved messages is the function that uh, in this case is called through the dummy service. And let's go for a bit to the dummy service. And what it's doing is like, so get received messages, it's it, the dummy service is called with the logger object and the dummy object, uh, the dummy app object, which was essentially what we just saw. It remembers those and once get received messages is called from the outside, uh, it basically does get received messages in the dummy object and returns that uh, to the caller. So that's essentially dummy app. Now what we are going to do is to um, let me pause this okay so now we've seen the now that we've seen the basic structure of a dummy scout app and driver let's actually uh, run it um, so a couple things here um, one is by uh, so platform which is the core home OS thing um, it starts with a configuration by default that configuration is in config um, but that can be changed. Uh, what we're going to do is to just for this experiment, we're going to run it with dummy config. Uh, to do that, uh, what we'll do is, um, so just actually before I go there, let me just show you uh, the structure. So there are a few config files here. Uh, devices is all the devices. Global has some global settings. Locations are locations defined in the house. Modules are the modules that you should, uh, that the platform should start. Rules are access control rules. Scouts are XML is which scouts the platform should start. Services are XML is what ports are running in the home and settings are some global settings and users are the list of users registered. So these XML files, they get changed and modified as uh, the users interact uh, with HomeOS. So, um, so like I said, by default, we actually run this config uh, we ship with and only the webcam scout uh, runs by default. So uh, what we'll do is we'll actually run with dummy config, uh, which is uh, which actually runs both the webcam scout and the dummy scout that I showed you. So this is what the dummy scout entry here uh, looks like. Um, so let me go and like if I want to run it in the debugger, go to properties in debug here. Um, so I've already done this. Um, so I'm saying basically start with the dummy config um, and minus LSTD out shares where the console log, uh, where the logging should happen. Um, and minus v false turns off essentially uh, access rule checking. So I kind of prepared this stuff. You don't, um, uh, if you sometimes communication issues, if you're trying to debug, it helps to have this flag, uh, but I don't think we need it now, but I'll keep the minus LSTD flag uh, Right, so and we're going to start with dummy config assays. So just to reiterate, uh, minus e dot dot, so two levels up, and this is relative to where essentially the platform binary sits. Uh, so I will now um, start this. Okay, to start again, debug, um, start debugging. So now the platform is running and the console is going to show here as before. Uh, we will again um, go to the dashboard link here. You can type it as well. Um, 
and the reason this time actually even though we were running with the new configuration we did not see the option for setting home id and stuff because it corresponding to dummy config we've already filled in like a dummy home id and things um, that's happening so if i go to add devices here now because the dummy scout is running with this configuration we see this dummy device um, i'll click on this and essentially um, and dummy test um, and location so this is very similar to the webcam adding stuff and app dummy which is the dummy app I just show it runs so app dummy has now been installed and by the way it might be easier if you want to just step through this code when you do this for the first time but so you and app dummy this is the UI and this update call is essentially maps to the get received messages uh, call and it's basically showing um, there I have some font problems with my browser uh, so you, this is not uh, very clear, but in your computer, it should actually be very good. Um, okay, so let's um, let's stop debugging now. Uh, and what I want to show you next is how to actually develop your own scouts and modules. So, and I'm gonna teach that by demonstration by developing a new scout, which we'll call Demi2. So to develop a new scout here, go to Add. A uh, new project of uh, its class library, and I just kind of organize. So I want to make sure my scout goes under the scouts directory, and these are the additional scouts we ship with. Uh, so you can take a look as as more for more examples. So scouts folder, and I'm gonna call this uh, dummy two. Um, okay, so my dummy two scout is now ready. Uh, to get started quickly, what I'll do is just copy content from dummy scout.cs in here control a uh, control v so i basically copied over all the content um be a little bit anal about um names dummy scout.cs i'll also copy the index.html and I will copy um, the service uh, paste. Okay, so let's go to, and I'll rename them, uh, dummy2scout.service. Uh, you should not rename index.html because the entry point for the UI is expected to be index.html. Okay, so dummy2scout. So I'll do essentially what I'll do here is, First of all, I'll uh, change the namespace to dummy2. Similarly, I'll change the namespace here to dummy2. Um, and we are seeing this red because we have not included some key references. And so what I'll do to include those references, add reference and in there. Okay, so the reason we are seeing the red here is uh, because we need to add some uh, references. Um, Go to browse, some of Visual Studio has been used, so you see a list, but in your case, the list would be empty. Um, so relative to the hub, um, um, most of the, out, uh, all of our output goes to under, under hub, there's a subfolder called output, and most of the binaries go there. The core platform binaries would go under output, binaries, you see output, binaries, pipeline, uh, sorry. So it's output binaries platform and the three DLLs we need here are platform homeos.hub common um, platform dot views and platform dot device scout. So we select these three, these are here and then you do an okay. Um, add and similarly in service, uh, I think what we need to do is to add a reference to, so these are standard system libraries. So we add essentially, um, we need to add system.service model and system. Dot, sorry, system.service model.web, these two. All right, okay. And the other thing we're gonna do is to rename this class uh, dummy to scout and just use the refactoring capabilities of Visual Studio 
to do that similarly we'll call this dummy to scout service this is just for cakes because we have namesays difference this names name overlap really doesn't matter but you know just to keep uh, code sanity and we'll name this contract uh, dummy scout 2 and the other thing we'll do here is um, go to dummy to scout here and what we'll see is we'll just give it a different name so it shouldn't discover the same devices and what we'll do is also um, make a new driver since this is a new device uh, dummy 2 and we'll get to making this driver and the other few things we need to do is to make sure that the output of dummy 2 uh, goes to the right place uh, so go to properties here and we want to make want to make two changes to the properties um, and what the properties of the scout should look like so we'll just see what the properties of dummy are like so one is uh, the namespace and default assembly name and namespace so what we'll do is give it a complete name dummy2 uh, dummy2 so we change that and the other thing we'll change is where uh, the output goes so the by default you'll see bin debug that's not where we want to go uh, so so this ends up in the right place so platform can find it uh, we'll essentially I what I did was just copy that output here and change its name to dummy2 control s and now we can compile it so what I just did actually was hit um, build solution which is uh, f6 um, okay uh, so now my, our scout is ready um, we can actually uh, see it um, we can see it by going to this is my output folder and so binaries scouts and here it is homo s hub scouts dummy 2 and you can see the binaries uh, here okay so that's so our dummy scout is uh, now ready uh, let's create um, uh, let's um, let's create like an app um, and which is similar to t creating oh actually let, before we create the app let's um, let's debug and make sure our um, dummy t scout is running so what we want to do is on startup uh, dummy2 scout should run so what I'm going to do is to go to platform um, and we're gonna keep working with dummy config so in the scouts list uh, what I'll do is add essentially dummy2 and dummy2 so so this is what we've done now what um, I'll do is actually I'll rebuild platform uh, what happens is once you change it here uh, so this is uh, this is the sources and these get copied over to the output from where it's actually the config that's consulted um, but it gets copied over only when uh, the platform uh, compiles so because that's probably um, that is a build operation so so what I mean by that so config sit here under output configs uh, dummy config and the change we made was to scouts.xml so if I do an open here so our change has now gotten copied here um, so this was uh, this is in the output setting. so close this so now if I um, to make sure that thing is running what I'll do is go to let me close this dummy to scout um, let me put a breakpoint here and I'll do start debugging platform starting and as part of it starting it'll read its scout.xml so see the init function got called and we got a breakpoint so I'll just do a continue here now our um, dummy scout we know it's running uh, to show you that it's actually running so this was um, our thing so if I go to add devices we see the dummy to device uh, because this is what the new scout has done okay so um, so now that we are happy our scout is working let me by the way you can enter quit on the console here and it'll do the same thing it'll quit um, there are um, just as a side note there are a set of commands you can enter on that console which are defined in platform.cs if you're curious what's defined okay so our scouts running uh, let's actually quickly uh, develop a new driver and a new app 
so to develop a new driver uh, what we'll do is so add new project class library browse drivers select folder and I'll call it dummy 2 okay that is okay the last bit will need to be scrapped let me okay we're uh, restarting um, so what I'm going to do is to now quickly define a new driver um, new project um, I am since it's a driver I'll put it under drivers select folder and call my driver dummy 2 um, okay so now to quickly get started I'll do the same thing that I did with scouts copy over the main files um, copy actually let me do this um, app.config copy um, I copy those three files and I'll delete the original class 1.cs here um, so app.config basically is where we keep our version numbers um, so we start off with 1.000 so you can just keep it and increase it every time you want to increase the version number okay uh, this is driver dummy um, and um, again I need to resolve these references so I'll do what I did for um, the scout I need to have um, add reference to browse and so again so output binaries platform and we need common and platform dot views uh, here okay so we add these references okay uh, one gotcha here to be aware of is that you once you add views what you have to do is to go to its properties and turn copy local to false so this is actually very important and it's required for the system dot add in framework that we use um, if you happen to compile it uh, before you've turned this property false uh, views dot dll will get copied to the output directory um, and that interferes with this add-in being found so if you've done that ever um, get in the situation delete all the output and uh, re reset its setting and then compile um, but we still have uh, more unresolved references and that is to system dot add-in framework we go to assemblies and find system dot add-in okay um, in writing a driver uh, this is the name of the driver is here system dot add in so we'll call give it a different name in case the case dummy 2 and we'll also change the namespace to be dummy 2 and you know for the purposes of this thing I will keep uh, everything else basically the same uh, and including the set of roles if this was a different driver you could actually define a new role like role dummy 2 and it could export that um, actually um, just for cakes let me go do that um, so what I'll do is um, go to common actually find role.cs uh, so there's the role dummy is here so what I will do is qu quickly define a new role role dummy 2 I'll keep it identical to that uh, two two and let's say it has the same set of operations it supports and with similar argument types two two okay so now I've defined a new role f6 um, f6 remember is for building go here and what I'll go to my um, I'll go to my driver um, dummy two driver uh, dummy uh, let's rename this driver dummy 2.cs um, let's rename this okay um, our driver is now ready um, 
and I'll put a breakpoint here because next time I want to see it, I want to make sure it starts. And it's doing the same thing. One thing we didn't change yet was um, make sure it actually announces role dummy two. Um, okay. And what I'll do to be safe is look for all instances of role dummy and change them to role dummy two. So role dummy. Roll dummy two, roll dummy two, me two, dummy two, that is it, I think. Um, okay. And the other thing we want to do is what basically we did make sure that this output is correctly configured. So go to properties of the project and they should be essentially similar to the properties of the original project we have in dummy. So the two things we need to change is the namespace. Um, dummy two and dummy two. Uh, in build we want to change the output folder so we just basically copy and paste uh, changes to dummy 2 and now we can actually build this and by default um, drivers would go under hub output binaries pipeline add-in and actually all drivers and apps go here uh, the one we just made was home is driver 2 and you can actually see that and once you see it here make sure that views.dll like I said is not present here um, okay so our driver is now ready um, let's uh, quickly um, do our app and then we'll give the whole thing a whirl uh, in one go um, so I'll do the same thing for our app um, new project I'll put it under under apps and let's call it dummy 2 this is a dummy 2 app okay and as we did for as we did initially we'll copy essentially the important bits copy uh, paste so the styles folder which is required by in HTML and I'll bring in config and the service service is the UI member and IDME contract control C and I'll paste everything here and I'll delete this part because and I'll go to this main thing and uh, so this is the same set of things we did for our driver so add reference uh, browse uh, so this is already pointed to the right place so common and we so we want common and we want platform dot views and in this case because we're using the data store we also want the data store one but so we'll since we haven't added that before we'll add it in the second go um, so browse okay uh, so browse so uh, binaries platform remember uh, homeos hub dot common dot data store this one add um, okay and we need the service model System dot ah here it is system dot service model and I think we also need system dot service model dot web and the other one we need is system dot add in um, that's required for um, this thing here okay um okay so this seems to work uh, at least references resolve just change this namespace change the name of the app so there should be no name conflict um, 
and what I'll do is um, so this dummy service is in here uh, what I'll do is change this and now I think this name should resolve because they're under the same namespace um, the other thing we need to do is to again because we want this app to use uh, dummy role 2 so control F actually let me do control R oh wait I could request 2 so we do uh, replace replace yes 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 okay it looks like um, we are done oh um, just like for the driver we want to make sure that views is uh, not copied local so we set that and then we set the properties um, again I'm gonna copy the properties from here uh, from dummy um, um, home OS so give the assembly a name that matches the namespace so it's dummy2 dummy2 um, build uh, which controls the output let's say the output goes here control a dummy2 control V and we make it dummy2 okay so now we are ready to build this dummy2 app um, so we need to reference homo start shared here add reference so to add homo start shared we go to browse Ooh, sorry uh, we go browse here binaries platform homo start shared add okay let's see if it compiles now aha uh -huh, it builds great um, and to check whether it ended up in the right place so so um, hub output binaries platform add-ins um, apps dot dummy two again making sure there's no views dot dll here now we are almost set um, I say almost because um, there's one last thing we need to change um, let me show you such that this now we, we bid this app uh, what we need to do is for the platform to be aware uh, through the UI that this app actually exists um, um, so you remember in uh, home OS, there's this icon in the dashboard shows up store and that store is picked up from a catalog and we may build that catalog under home store so what I'm going to do is um, uh, since we defined a new role one of the things I'll do is in role DB dot XML uh, I'll define a new role uh, dummy 2 which we defined and I think I may have forgotten to change let's say was it dummy 2 um, anybody remember uh, role.cs oh we forgot to change the name actually here okay dummy2 all right sorry about that so we change uh, role dummy2 and then we go to module db.xml so this is the list of um, applications uh, that will be available uh, to through the UI since we copied app dummy what we do app dummy2 here dummy example basic application 2 and what it's saying is the basically the list of uh, roles this application needed which is done for compatibility matching such that once we're installing a device that exports dummy 2 uh, this application will show up as an option so once we make these changes like I said before uh, make sure you rebuild platform all of this configuration data is then copied over and now I think we are ready to give a world so what I'll do is uh, Where's my debug option here? I, I already rebuilt. Uh, sorry, uh, the debug option will be here. Um, debug. Start new instance. Ta da da, ta da da. Oh, there you go. Oh, this breakpoint we had set for the dummy scout, so it's running again. Let me just continue. 
Um, okay. Um, so we go to the dashboard again. If we do add devices, uh, so last time remember we stopped at dummy two device. Uh, if I go here now, our scout ran. Oh, uh, because we picked the device now, the system has found the driver for dummy two, which was specified in the scout, and this thing is running. So I'll press um, continue here. So our driver is now running. So let's go to the thing and see a couple things happened here. Um, um, okay, um, so now we have our app driver and scout. We are ready to give it this thing a whirl. Um, so what I'll do actually to clean up all the old configuration that came from the running, what I'll do is go to the output folder and um, just nuke the config directory. And if I rebuild here, uh, you'll see it'll get recreated from exactly what's in the sources. Okay, and then I will essentially start this. So while this starts, I'll um, bring up my browser, go to the dashboard here, and do add devices. Now we see two devices because scouts for both dummy device and dummy two device are running. And we've constructed essentially a very similar uh, chain. Oh, our dummy driver two is running, so breakpoint here. Just kill that, continue from here. Um, go here. So what you see now is uh, basically this is the device setup page. I can set up my dummy two device. Uh, let me sh actually to make sure that you know that the dummy two app is running. Let me put a breakpoint here. Uh, so apps dummy two. Go to its main file, which is dummy here. I'll put a start here, right now. So this is showing up like this because this module is not yet loaded by Visual Studio, but uh, once I tell it to install this application, let's say it's indoors, just for fun. I done. Ah, so now basically as part of that, the app got copied. It's running. So as you see from the breakpoint, I'll do F5 here. So this is now this application is running. And just because it's the same thing, these guys are sitting around and sending each other messages in a similar way. And I can go in here and update and these messages show up. So remember my IE fonts were broken. And that is it. Um, so that essentially concludes our quick or not so quick tutorial on writing scouts, apps, and drivers for Home OS. Uh, in other videos, uh, we show you how to actually deploy them to various houses and stuff, but not in this one. Um, and that's it for now. Ta!